this time we will uh, switch gears to our regular board meeting. And uh, we can start by rising to the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, on uh, take and roll, I uh, just need to note that uh, this is Graham and Mr. Leach are both absent tonight. Again, uh, Mr. Leach and Mrs. Grimm are absent tonight. <laughs> executive session. Um, there will be an executive session immediately following tonight's meeting to discuss personnel items. And I do not have any forms for public comment, but that being said, is there any public comment to be made tonight? Okay. Right. So I'll I'll uh, make a motion that we uh, approve the monthly board action minutes. Uh, for the meetings on January 10th and January 24th. That's 4.1 and 4.2. Motion and a second. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we have uh, receiving of accounts for audit. <clears throat> Yes, I'll need a motion to accept the high school, the middle school, and the cafeteria accounts as presented. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Uh, I'll need a motion to approve the payment of invoices in the amount of $4,490,841.61. For January 2017 as presented. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Any comments or questions? A question in regards to uh, the renting of sound systems. Uh, that was one of the payments that was put out this month. Can we get a little more information on that? We have a new um, high school auditorium and I believe a somewhat modernized middle school auditorium. How often are we needing to rent sound systems? I don't expect you to know this right now, but how often we're needing to rent these systems? Why does it make sense to, you know, purchase an adequate system? Uh, would we be saving money? Uh, to my knowledge, uh, the sound systems are typically supplemented for plays and potentially for a concert. So. Um, I'll have to dig up how much we actually spend for those throughout the year. Graduation too, right? Uh, out at the stadium, yes. Right. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Wasn't sure if I heard everybody. Okay, motion carries. And finally, uh, we need to have a motion to approve the treasurer's reports, uh, report for January 2017 as presented and file it forward for audit. Second. Second. Motion and a second. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, moving on to the report of the superintendent. Uh, I would like to turn it over to our board reps uh, for their monthly update. Hi, everyone. Um, of course, I want to just highlight some of the events coming up, what our students are doing, and 
kind of the amazing projects that are going on. So in the high school, we have our color day coming up on this Friday. Um, the theme is Chasing Your Dream. And in the beginning, there's a whole ceremony around the theme, um, students speak, and it's overall just a very kind of emphasizes like school spirit, getting everyone involved. It's overall a very fun event, um, one of the, our most memorable ones. We also have the Putnam County Spelling Bee coming up, which is our annual musical, and this is March 30th to April 1st, and tickets are now on sale. I've seen a lot of the like practices, and they've been working really hard, so definitely want to attend that. Um, we're also in the process of creating a principal student advisory council. Dr. Ziegler will be working with not only us, but also a lot of other students. This is getting added onto also our student forum. And then lastly for the high school, we have the Follette Challenge, which Mrs. Small talked about, we talked about in our last meeting, and she just wanted to say that we're waiting to hear back about the results of it, but we want to thank everyone for voting and all of your support. Um, in terms of the middle school, the Fuel to Play 60 sponsored the Super Bowl Exercise Challenge and a healthy snack morning with fresh strawberries, and this is special thanks to our teachers, Mrs. Henry, Mrs. Ian, and the Fuel to Play 60 team. So I was involved with the Field to Play 60 program when I was in middle school, and it's an amazing program. It really gets people active and involved. Um, the LEGO Robotics team is also an eighth grade team, completed the first LEGO League Regional Championships at the University of Pennsylvania um, this past weekend and won a second place for Innovation Solution. I got to go down, and um, some of the students and me got to go down and meet, see Mrs. Frasca again, and we kind of got to see their innovation and what they created. And in fact, they did something along the lines of people that are like physically disabled finding a solution in order to um, allow them to go like horseback riding. So it's, it was really, really neat. And lastly, the middle school is about to implement map testing and they also completed teacher training. And this will help meet the needs of all learners in math and ELA classrooms. So thank you. All right, okay, so um, I'm just gonna also start with here, there we go, okay. I'm gonna also start with the high school. Um, so I have some student forum notes. Uh, common themes are always uh, wonderful teachers. There's a wide variety of courses. Um, course selections going on right now. Um, so, you know, it's great that, you know, we, you know, offered all those different courses. Um, you know, we have the access uh, to technology, obviously, that me and Maya have and everyone else. Um, and we're working towards uh, improving the pride period. Um, pride period's really interesting during the student forums. Um, a lot of students love it. Um, some don't like it. Um, and then the ones that love it want either want more of it or an alternating day. So that that's going to be really interesting to see what we can do with pride period because there's such a wide variety of how people feel about it. Uh, winter ball was this Saturday. Uh, seeing posts on Facebook and talking to some friends today uh, it seemed to me like everyone enjoyed themselves and that they had a great time, so that's uh, that's a good thing. Um, so then West Prots group. Uh, today was, it was today, right? Okay, yeah. Uh, oh, yes, okay. Um, so uh, the 100th day of school celebration, um, they engaged in math, writing, and reading activities all about 100. Uh, in, in the kindergarten, uh, students dressed up like they were 100 years old. Um, and in the second grade, the teachers uh, take the children's pictures and use an app to project what the children will look like when they are 100 and completed a writing activity uh, to go with the pictures. Um, next, is the, <laughs> next is the Ring Rocks um, thing. Oh, uh, oh, they enjoyed a great um, assembly about energy, which was spon uh, sponsored by PICO. Uh, they also celebrated the 100th day of school, and teachers used this special day to teach and reinforce math concepts in a fun way. Uh, and finally, the Falcon 5 focus this month is respect. And yeah, that rounds it out. Uh, thank you both. I just wanted uh, to add, maybe you want to weigh in. I know that coming up uh, next week you have a uh, the student board rep luncheon. Uh, with some neighboring schools, maybe you want to make a comment about that to share that with the board. Um, yes, in the upcoming weeks, we're going to be meeting with two other schools, and we're going to be talking kind of like 
what they're doing, what their roles are in their own district, and comparing and contrasting how we can make um, what we do better. And also, I know like last year, we kind of adapted the two students that so the junior representative could learn. So it's kind of getting those like new ideas um, and seeing what we can do better. So yeah, and we'll report out on that once we do get like the results of that. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, moving on, moving on um, to action items regarding personnel, uh, professional staff, or retirement. Move to combine all personnel. Second. <laughs> that's n no. As a matter of fact, I uh, got caught up in a protocol, so uh, I, I appreciate you jumping to 9.9 .9 consent approval, if that's the wish of the board. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I second it. Okay. So, does anybody have any uh, questions or comments on 9 1 through 9 9? Just 9 1. Will the retirement be acknowledged at some point? Or is that when it is tonight when the retirement would be acknowledged, or do we do that later? That'll be later. Okay. Yeah. Good. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. 9 1 through 9 9. Pass. Moving on to uh, action items and business. I need, a, I need to pause a little bit, maybe. I'll, I'll wait for. Um, <laughs> uh, Ten point one, the MCIU membership budget. Uh, the uh, the district recommends the, the approval of the uh, seventeen eighteen Montgomery County Intermediate Unit membership services budget as presented. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, 10 2, the Chester County Intermediate contract. Uh, the district recommends the approval of tuition for one student at the TEACH program, uh, school based partial hospitalization program through the Chester County IU. Uh, unit at a rate of 272 and four cents per day and 163 dollars and six cents for extended school year we have a motion and a second any questions comments okay all in favor aye, aye. opposed motion passes uh, 10 threes uh, contract with staffing plus the district recommends uh, the approval of an open contract with Staffing Plus Incorporated for one-on-one -on -one student aides at a rate of $18 per hour. So Motion and a second. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Budget transfer, budget transfers. Uh, the district is asking for approval of budget transfers for January 2017. So second. Uh, motion and a second. Questions or comments? Just a comment. I'm presuming that we'll see less and less of that uh, in the coming budget year because of how you guys are looking at it in more detail. Is that a good assessment to, to have? Uh, in, in general, yes, but uh, things arise from time to time that weren't uh, perceived at the time of the budget, and that would potentially cause uh, the need for a budget transfer. Anyone else? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. High school renovation project change orders. Uh, the district recommends approval of these change orders as presented. Motion and a second. Do, do we have any questions or comments on this one? I do. Are the, these are new change orders. So while we're doing our punch list, we're still getting change orders. Um, okay. Most of the work was done in the 
passed. It just took time to get the process through the change order process. And the administration agrees with these change orders? I've had extensive conversation with the construction manager, and we feel they're valid. Yes. Okay. And I'm presuming and trusting that these will be uh, reviewed as well as far as yes. who should be responsible. I mean, I'm just looking at the first one. Something had to be changed around because it didn't meet ADA requirements. It seems to me that they should have known that. So I'm sure somebody will be paying for that besides us. Thank you. Were these on your list tonight? No, those were added ones. Okay. So, uh, that's the next batch. It's the next page. Yes. For next meeting. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Uh, this feels good saying. Okay. <laughs> well, the motion still passes. Construction invoice, the district gas approval of the construction invoice for the Potsgrave High School renovation project as presented. Motion and a second. Any questions or comments here? Did we ever get the balancing sorted out? This is for the plumber, so uh, this isn't the mechanical. Take a plumbing time, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Were any of the change orders for plumbing? They were all general contractors. All right, then. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Motion passes. Okay, moving down to uh, Section 11 action items. Um, we would like to present the district to recommend the approval of the 2017-18 Potts Grove School calendar as submitted. We motion and a second for uh, approval of the 1718 calendar. Comments? I just want to point out because I've received a number of questions from people over the last few weeks who are trying to plan their vacations that uh, we'll, with, with the approval of this calendar, if it is approved, uh, we'll be going back to the way we have traditionally handled the start of the school year um, before Labor Day. Uh, as opposed to after Labor Day, which we did because of the high school renovation project over the last couple of years. So uh, um, that has school starting, if I'm reading this correctly, on the 29th? 20, 28th. 28th, I'm sorry, of uh, August. Correct. And so, I mean, people can read the calendar, and they will, but I just wanted to make sure that we're all aware that that's uh, what the administration is recommending we do. And I'm in agreement for what it's worth. I saw some uh, questions and comments on social media regarding the calendar. Before we vote, would it be okay, uh, Mr. President, to open the floor if there's any public comments specific to the calendar? Uh, sh absolutely. And, and then, again, if, if anybody wants to ask on behalf of the public uh, from the board, it's, it's fine, too. That's, we'll get it all out before we, uh, before we make the vote. I will just say while I have the mic on that um, I had – asked the question uh, to Dr. Shirk specifically, you know, what are the benefits of starting before Labor Day versus after Labor Day? Um, it was a very, you know, well thought out decision, although after Labor Day works better for a lot of people, I think mostly for vacation purposes. But, um, you know, in order for us to stay on track with the Western Center and um, a lot of other back to school activities also they you know there's a feeling that that short week to begin with uh, gives the students time to kind of readjust have a long weekend and then come back full steam ahead as opposed to you know full steam ahead from the first day forward so um, I mean it was I think unanimous agreement uh, 
from the administration that that was the that was the way we should go, um, but it wasn't just because because that's the way we did it before the construction. And I too agree uh, with with how it's presented. I just want to make sure we you know hear from the public. Mr. President, is the calendar online now? The new calendar? I don't think so until it's. Approved. So will it be up tomorrow morning? Just asking. I'm not going to vote no. Okay. And now <laughs> yeah. are there. It'll, it'll, it'll be in draft. It'll, Joe, it'll be on draft. Are there any other significant changes besides the start of the school year? Um, no. Actually, I could say there's something significant that, we, that, that I think we're deciding not to change, which is to set the graduation date in stone uh, prior to the year actually starting and, and knowing where the, where the snow days may fall. There's implications there if the, you know, cost-wise, reimbursement-wise, uh, from the state if our seniors don't attend the, rec the mandatory 180 days. So if we were to stick with a date, um, it would be a significant cost at a significant cost to us. So we did have some requests to set that date in stone, and uh, we it got reviewed thoroughly. Uh, to see if that was an option. I think, you know, the recommendation is we don't do that. So not a change, but it was a, a question that a lot of people were asking, and the, the administration's recommended we keep it the way it Valuable to know. Done. Thank you. And I just want to add to what you said um, uh, in, uh, in deference to Mr. Leach, uh, but uh, in addition to all those reasons that you uh, mentioned for starting earlier, um, given that the state's testing windows are uh, for uh, PSSAs, um, for Keystones, and for AP exams are hard-coded into their schedules. The earlier we start, the, the more time our students have to prep for, uh, um, uh, for like the AP exam, uh, or, and, and more importantly, cover the material that needs to be covered. Um, you know, the state uh, tests the PSSAs in April um, even though the students don't stop till June, which has never made any sense to me. Um, uh, and, you know, AP is at least in May, um, but, you know, those extra days do matter, I think, in terms of our overall performance, and that's another reason to start early. Er. And just, just one point of emphasis, too, we uh, working with, the, with our teaching staff and along with Mr. Cardwell's staff, uh, we did open up the building uh, the week of uh, August 7th for prep for them, on a um, on a not a as need basis, but as, as the buildings are completed, uh, we ask the teachers that they call in and check with building secretaries and building administrators to make sure that they can get to their particular hallway or their particular area. We felt no reason, you know, just to uh, you know go with one week. Uh, we've done the last two years, so that was something we worked together on, and you'll see that on there as a uh, an apricot area that's really the the um, first two weeks before we we come back in. Any other comments or questions before we move forward? Okay, so all in favor for Aye. the calendar? Aye. Any opposed? All right. Motion passes. Okay, moving on to conference attendance, 11.2. Uh, uh, we asked. Motion and a second to combine all conference attendance action items. Does anybody have any questions or comments about any of the conferences? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Great. All motions pass. Just, um, yeah, so, so everybody knows uh, <laughs> we have the JOC. Update on the agenda tonight, but Mrs. Grimm could not attend uh, the meeting tonight. So we're going to defer that update until uh, our next meeting. Okay, okay mo moving on to uh, item 13, committee uh, committee items, uh, and we're going to look. Uh, uh, are these, these are actually we're we're looking. Yeah, I was going to ask Mr. Lavik to. Uh, 
make a motion to accept. Combine, move to combine the minutes. Well, I have a report out. Oh, so mine is not minutes yet. Uh, Sorry, not mine, but policy right. committee. It's a report. So a motion to approve the minutes for the committee, the curriculum, the technology, and student affairs. Thank you. Second. 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 Yes. Got it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Questions or comments on the committee meeting minutes? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion passes. And then on to the report of the policy committee meeting that took place on February 2nd. Um, real quickly, old business. Uh, we reviewed policy 209.2 for head lice. We did uh, reword the uh, requirements for readmission of a student after treatment uh, very slightly just to make things more clear. That is posted right now uh, on the district website for a 30-day uh, public review and comment. So we will be uh, coming back to the February 28th board meeting with the recommendation to approve that policy. Um, the second uh, old business policy was uh, 247 on hazing. And uh, what, what we're trying to do with this policy again uh, is to make it crystal clear and uh, come up with a plan, which we, I think, have now. Um, but we, we the, the policy committee asked for a, a, a plan to be drawn up on how we're going to communicate this policy. It is a, a major revision that came uh, direct recommendation from, from the governor. Um, so we want to make sure that we have a, a strong plan in place to communicate this to all staff and make sure that they have read and understood it and been trained to it. Um, so that's that's that was the discussion on 247, and we have received that that plan. So uh, it'll move the, the the training, the introduction and training to the new policy for staff will move forward. Um, I believe starting. Uh, that, that, with that. A, Actually, it's going, to, it's going to start tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So no, sooner I'll, I'll than later, then I'll report that out. Yeah, when okay, we get great. the answers to previous question. Thank you. Um, we the the committee mm -hmm. continues to work on the uh, policy 707 use of facilities uh, to come up with a new fee schedule for. Um, I I think the you know we're we're pretty pretty good on the community use. Uh, or student program use of the facilities. Uh, we're looking again uh, more deeply into outside, completely outside of the district organizations uh, and their rental of our facilities with all of these uh, new facilities that we have available. Um, I know we've talked about it at uh, a number of these report outs and every policy committee meeting probably for the past six months, but uh, our goal is to have this policy uh, written and up for approval by the end of this school year so that we can implement it for uh, the 17-18 year. And uh, the last one was uh, policy 816.1, use of live streaming video uh, for school property or on school property. Um, this is a recommended uh, policy to implement from PASBO, uh, we reviewed the policy for the second time at the meeting, and uh, I guess the proposal was to just re uh, rephrase or remove a, f uh, a certain phrase from the, from the uh, policy about the healing arts practitioner. So um, I think that's up yes, for review now. Um, so I think uh, February 28th. We'll be looking to approve that policy too, or hear public comment uh, and send us back to the drawing board. Uh, new new business that was uh, brought up was um, a, another PASBO recommended policy uh, addressing homeless students, and um, you know, maybe a lot of people don't realize that that's something we have to address, but it absolutely is, and we want to make sure that we're uh, completely covering those needs. Um, we did review the basic uh, PASBO recommended policy 
um, but we ran out of time to fully review it, so that'll be on the docket again for February 28th. And then the second policy uh, in the same vein, uh, 255, which was educational stability for children in foster care. Basically, you know, if, if we have a, a student, that a child that's in foster care, and as a result, a student of Pottsgrove, what happens when that foster care situation changes? Um, how do we accommodate for that? We don't want them to be uprooted in the in the middle of a school year. Um, so how do how do we provide um, for that student? And we need to basically uh, agree to a guideline. And again, we'll we'll be second second uh, pass at reviewing that policy at our February 28th meeting. That's uh, that's uh, all I have for for that report unless anybody has questions. Okay, thank you. Um, All right, at this time, um, do we have any new business? I have a couple of things. <clears throat> um, We've had some discussion regarding cameras in the buildings. Uh, if we haven't yet, uh, could we have the SROs uh, review the, the camera setups and give us their opinion as far as, you know, appropriate settings? Do we need additional cameras? Do they need to be moved a little bit? Uh, that kind of thing for each building. Um, Mr. Parker, I think um, we have, and maybe Mr. Carl, you want to comment? We, we have uh, had the the camera expert team come in uh, from our the vendors that supplied us with with our cameras and uh, maybe you can give us an update I know he shared some information with the board earlier earlier in the week um, uh, Monday our vendor who installed the uh, cameras here at the high school showed up uh, they're still on the premise uh, not now but tomorrow they'll be back uh, we found out that it was a network error where their hub wasn't reading to the district computer hubs with IP addresses and so forth. So more than 50% of our cameras were down here at the high school. We are up to 98% of them operating and recording right now. There are still two that are that have issues that will be repaired this week here. Um, working with the administration, the high school administration, we relabeled the cameras here in the high school for better understanding where they're placed at in the building by name and focus uh, the cameras for the best area of visual view. Uh, there's still a few more that we want to adjust mainly on the outside perimeter. Right now the district has those cameras zoomed out to the uh, forest peak that narrows the cone of vision. The uh, vendor recommended bringing them in to give you a wider cone of vision. Uh, more so around the perimeter of the building. Um, so that has taken place. We ran test runs on the system itself. So over the last two days here, we corrected the uh, majority of all the problems that are there. Like I said, still two outstanding issues here. You had mentioned about 50% of the high school cameras were offline, I guess is the term. Offline for visual view at the station that's in the high school administration office, but the hub at the server, you were able to view them. So when a text came on the property, they're seeing everything, and right. then we had to... How, how long were the cameras down for until we realized it? Because my understanding is um, uh, there was a question uh, from somebody in the community <coughs> which then raised other questions, and that's a concern of mine. Uh, it seems to me that, and I would request, unless there's disagreement from anybody on the board, that uh, any camera outage be the highest priority uh, in repair. How long were these cameras down for, if you know? So, I, let me correct myself. When I say the cameras were down, they weren't down. So, from my office, I can see what's going on. I can literally see. So, we would go in and check things and say, it's working, but from the station where the uh, school resource office was, they weren't able to. 
Well, no, you can still, so the server's still recording, like for instance, the incident, the incident that we had here on the, I think March 3rd or so forth in the parking lot, I had the contractors go through. That information is documented in the server, so the system was recording everything, right? But just so happened to the location where the high school had their system set up, they couldn't view it, but we can go into the hub of the camera system and get that information. So that, and, and let me correct you, I'll just add this here too. So it was periodic uh, failures here and there. I can't say all 50% of the cameras were out at one time. The area where we had the largest issue was the science wing here. Unfortunately, the cables there, and we did react to this right away, uh, a contractor cut the camera cables when they were going to work there. So we had to have the vendor come back, rewire those cables in, and then they weren't reading to the hub in the high school administration office, but they were reading to the main server hub. So it's like a quagmore. We can say that this group here couldn't see it, but the system itself is still up and running. I hear what you're saying, and, and I, uh, I'm thankful that they were continuing to be recorded, except for the wires that were cut in the science wing, I imagine. Uh, but uh, I think it should be a priority that the SROs are continuously able to see the cameras at all times or someone from the administration and do request again that this, um, if it's not already, I'm not saying it isn't, be a priority that uh, the moment it's seen it isn't fixed, that that be at the top of the list. And I still go back and would request that, I understand the um, camera experts, you know, we're in and checking the cameras, but um, I, I think it would be beneficial for the SROs to, to chip in their opinion as well and make sure they, they're comfortable. I think I think they they have they have Mr. Parker they're they're, they're part of the process and I think um, you know they um, they they do weigh in on that with our building administrators they do they do weigh in on it with uh, with the facility staff and I think the SRO what, what we had to do unfortunately the SRO had to, not unfortunately he just had to walk <laughs> down to another office to view to view so now we're in a position where that is that's been taken care of he can be at his desk you know. Uh, and get back to that point. Obviously, we don't want him at his desk all day as well. I mean, that's, that, that's a concern too. So, uh, but now he does have access really at his, at his desktop to view, the, to view the cameras. And then obviously, the administration has multiple viewing points. Mr. Carwell, is that correct? I mean, obviously, yes. your office, the, the SRO office, is there any other viewpoints? We could get IP addresses out. Okay, which? Have, you know, to certain individuals to be able to have on their mobile device. Right. And that might be something we want to consider um, as well. We can maybe speak to the SROs regarding that type of, of recommendation. But um, I, I will check with the building principals, but I'm sure that um, they have been part of this, this process from the start. Yeah. And if I could just add one last thing, too. Um, we do respond immediately calling in our, the vendor to service uh, a camera, but we're going to move forward with a different way of how we contract with the vendor. Now we're going to actually go to a service requirement contract. So that vendor is basically on call. They'll provide preventative maintenance annually scheduled out. Compared to us being reactive, we're going to a more proactive approach on all the district cameras moving forward. So that will be a, a process that will actually start next fiscal year because you know, I have to put the, I have to request the money for that service contract. So I, you started to answer my question then, because my, my question was around, you know, corrective action to make sure that this doesn't happen again. Because what it sounded like to me was we didn't know they didn't work until we had a reason to go and look. Um, so I get the preventive maintenance and annually come in uh, and maintenance the, the equipment, but theoretically, a camera could go down the day after the preventive maintenance happens and be down for a year if we don't find it. So I would only suggest that there be some sort of internal, you know, verification. You don't have to repair it, but, you know, every day or every other day, somebody clicks through the 100 cameras and makes sure they're getting a live feed, keeps a record somewhere that we checked it. I mean, I, I, I agree, I think probably everybody would, that this is, this is, a high priority system and the the last thing I would ever want to see happen is that we 
we missed something as it was happening or we can't follow up on something that did happen we had you know we had a system there and but it wasn't effective and we didn't know it so i don't you know i don't know if there's something maybe can be added internally if, even if it's a hundred i mean if there's a hundred cameras in this building great but if they're not catching all the areas and or you know the the wires cut if somebody just clicks through them every so often to make sure mm -hmm. they're getting a live feed everywhere they should and and getting recording everywhere they should more than more than once a year i yeah. think I makes sense that, that pretty much i would say happens because a lot of communication comes directly from the schools um that's something they notice on a daily basis so far i get calls right away hey this camera's down this mbr isn't working or so forth can you reset it and so forth so i think at each of the schools itself the administrator and their staff there are reviewing the cameras going through on a daily basis. This issue here was just a systemic one due to putting in the new system not really working properly. Um, so I will say that uh, my colleagues, the principals and administrators regularly communicate with the issue of cameras from their daily use. And I think what we can do is um, um, you know, with Mr. Carwell's help and our building administrators, we can we can take a look at the structures that need to be in place to make sure that uh, we have a, a routine uh, maintenance check on all of our cameras. So we can put that we can put that in place. Another question: um, Do we have any information yet? Uh, I've heard something, I've read something about the state doing away with the SPP and replacing it with. Uh, the future ready PA index to be looking at more than just scores is that in the pipeline anywhere is it getting down to the district level yet it it, ha it hasn't yet uh, obviously uh, uh, there are uh, there's some information coming up um, you know in the, in the in the superintendents group and I know across the state but nothing specifically as with that every student succeeds and what what that looks like for us at the local level at this point uh, but obviously as soon as that does get out that's that's a share um, you know, obviously for, you know, our curriculum committee to start out, but obviously, obviously the whole board. Yeah. Um, I just have something real quick. Has, I don't know if there's ever been any kind of alumni survey or alumni communication. Um, I just, you know, we talk a lot about the, the students that are currently in the school and, you know, AP classes that are going to help them when they go off to college and stuff like that. But do we ever send out any kind of communication to alumni and find out where they are, what they're doing? Um, you know, how well did they, you know, did, did Potts Grove prepare them? Um, do they feel that there were any ways that they could have been prepared better? What were the strengths, weaknesses? You know, any places where we could sort of, you know, maybe do better or areas that we're doing great and you know give ourselves a pat on the back that and I think it would just be nice to sort of catch up you know and just see where they are and just you know I don't I don't know if anything like that's ever been done I think in the the day of of um, social media you know email addresses stuff like that I think it would be sort of a little easier than it was in the past you can definitely look into that I would just add, because it gives me a chance to bring it up again, that uh, would be an, if we were to do that, that would be another place where you could measure uh, whether or not we have net promoters or detractors um, over a period of time um, uh, as, uh, you know, a support for uh, how, uh, you know, I'm thinking that I think that would be a really valid measure of, of how well we're doing that we're not capturing right now, you know, looking at uh, high school students former high school students um, as they move through their careers at college and beyond. So. I have one other issue that um, has been a concern of mine for a long time, and I've brought it up in the past, I, I believe before I was even on the board, um, and I know it is not an issue specific or, or uh, solely to this district, but it's the issue of the challenge of having enough <laughs> subs and the number of sub failures and one thought I had, uh, and I was trying to play with some numbers, 
We pay our subs uh, between 100 and 120 a day, uh, depending on how many days they've worked in the district. That equates to um, an annual salary of sorts of 22500 basically half of what a starting teacher, less than half of what a starting teacher would start out at. Yet, when there's a central office um, need for a sub, so to speak, where we're paying contracting day to day, uh, we pay, or in the past we've paid 500 something, but just say 500. That equates uh, to uh, for their annual salary of 123,000, almost 124,000, which I believe is probably even higher than uh, what uh, that position would be once hired. Those two are kind of way off there. I get that we uh, are, you know, in comparison to other districts, we're where we should be. Uh, we're not too high, we're not too low, and that's, that's a positive. But I wonder if this is a case um, where we need to kind of lead the charge, so to speak. Um, <coughs> because 100, 110, and then 120 a day uh, doesn't cut it for, for these uh, professionals that are out there. And nor is, uh, which clearly, because if we're paying a central office staff, <coughs> 500, which equates to more than what they would get, you know, if it was a day-to-day -day thing. Uh, there's an issue there. And in this budget season, and this is not like me to be saying or suggesting, I get that, but um, when there's a sub-failure, um, it has a significant impact on our students, our other staff, uh, and then other students in the other rooms that have to house these kids. Um, and our kids are losing out, and, and that's a problem. So I would encourage us to, um, I'm not looking for anything tonight. This is just the first time I'm expressing this thought. Uh, but I would encourage uh, the board and the administration to, to just kind of ponder that um, uh, thought, and um, maybe we can discuss it in the future. Well, uh, I, I, my only question um, in response, uh, and it's really uh, in addition, I should say, um, is uh, does the administration think that raising the amount of money that we spend for substitutes would improve our coverage? Um, and how much would we have to raise it to actually improve our coverage. I mean, I get the dichotomy that you're talking about, um, and I think it's a realistic one, but just like uh, administrator salaries versus uh, teacher salaries, uh, uh, while um, uh, administrative raises often get noticed um, uh, to the, uh, negatively by the community, the fact is that their overall impact on the budget is, mu is much lower. Um, than even small increases in comparison to the teachers because that's where the bulk of the salaries are, um, uh, where the bulk of the employees are. The same with the substitutes, right? So, so I agree that we should do everything we can to address the shortage of subs, but if the shortage is because teachers aren't graduating uh, from the schools in the same numbers, then my suspicion is it doesn't matter how much we pay. Um, because they're just not out there in the numbers that all the districts need. And what we would do is start an arms race, probably, more than address the issue. If we raise what we pay, $30, um, and the subs all stop going to Springford, then what is Springford going to do? Um, they're going to raise it, too, um, and then we're all paying more, which may be great for uh, maybe, maybe long term that would uh, help bring more teachers into the system, in the short term, it's just going to hit us budgetarily. So that would be my concern. But if you think that raising would have an impact, then I would want that recommendation um, for sure. I'll just add a thought. Uh, I work as a sub, uh, not in this district, uh, so I'm not looking to up my salary here, uh, and purely out of, you know, um, enjoyment, I guess. 
uh, I'm in other districts and the subs that I see in other districts aren't necessarily the subs I see here. You know, they're, you know, because they get, have enough work in wherever that district is. They're at other districts for other reasons. So you give them a big enough incentive, um, who's not going to go where, you know, they're getting, I don't want to throw out a number, but they're getting, you know, more appropriate pay for, for their work. Uh, there's definitely other subs out there. I think you're right, Rick, in that what ultimately we'll see is like an arms race, so to speak. You know, we up it, then this district has to up it, and then this district has to up it. I don't necessarily see that as a bad thing, only because the average rate we're paying subs is so poor. So I think in the short term, it, it would have a positive effect for us because it would bring in the other people that other districts are getting. No comment on what it would do to that district. I understand that, but um, my concern is here. Uh, but uh, one thing I didn't think of is a point you inadvertently made long term. You know, I think uh, it would only have a positive effect. But my concern is more short term here covering our classrooms. Uh, just a couple comments, if I may. Um, uh, every, every year for the last two years, I've done. Uh, uh, studies, you know, on local substitutes, uh, and I and I will re I will reissue that to the board as well to give you some, some update and talk a little bit more about the number of teachers that are coming into who's coming into the profession who's not anymore based based on past numbers. We have that information. We are definitely competitive on our salaries. That no doubt we're not we're not behind the eight ball. We're we're definitely middle of the road. Uh, we're fair, and I think compared to even to some of our neighbors, uh, we're we're we can we compete very well with the subs. The, the, the dollar figure. My concern would be, and, I, and Mr. Lingren, I, I, maybe, I, maybe I need to talk, bring my wish list to the board, could be, uh, and you can say no, uh, would be that if we're looking at subs, I need to look at everybody. We haven't given raises to people, uh, our duty aides, our staff support. I'm like, really? Like, so I hear, like, I, I, I think that if that's something, if we're gonna, you know, if we're gonna give, 3%, you know, we're going to go to 100 to 103, or we're going to go 10%, then I think we need the person that's making 921 or 976. Um, you know, I, I, can, I can honestly say we lose people um, from our support staff because of 2 or $3 in other districts, because we're, we haven't upped it. We haven't had any incremental increases for many, many years. And I know, Dave, you could probably tell me what it is, but not, not to prolong this talk tonight, but I think if, if that's something that the board is interested in doing, then that would be probably my wish list to say, um, let's look at the whole package. You know, we do have agreements, you know, with our teamsters, we have agreements with our, our secretarial staff, um, but those, our outliers, our miscellaneous, some of those miscellaneous employees, we don't. So if it's something you want to really look at from top to bottom, I would be in favor of, of that. I just, I think we would be pitting a couple different groups I think it's just something, obviously, it's discussion, but that, they're my first couple thoughts come to mind. Can you just clarify, uh, because like you said, um, uh, since for the year I've been on the board, we've looked at a couple different contracts, um, and there has been raises across the board. Could yeah, but not for the substitutes. That's what I was going to say. Not for the substitute duty aids. Right. If you were referring to substitutes, I would agree that we do need to look at uh, all substitutes. No. Go ahead. I mean, the, the, the non contractual folks, uh, the, the duty aides and um, people that don't have a contract or a union looking out for them, basically, are the people that haven't gotten a raise. It's pretty much that simple. And when you're trying to hold a, a zero tax increase, you know, the people that don't have anybody else to look out for them don't get looked out for. So I'll just point out that I brought this up uh, with Mrs. Fiola a couple of times over the last few years and asked her to look at it because I was hearing from members of the community who were working in these substitute aid roles um, uh, saying that their salary hasn't changed in five, six, seven years. Um, and so personally, I would endorse at least hearing what your wish list is. I mean, it's going to put more pressure on us uh, from a budgetary perspective for sure. But if the impact is small for us and large for the individuals, then I think it's at least worth considering, personally. Not to drag out 
as Dr. Schrick has indicated, but can we quantify the extent of the problem here? Are we missing 50% of subs a month? Are we missing 25? Are we missing 10? What, what's the extent of the problem? We, we don't have, there's not enough teachers in the pipeline. Got that. Period. And um, we do have a lot of absences that we need to fill. And um, it's, you know, that is, that is a concern. Um, we, have, um, we haven't recently worked with, our, with our, uh, our, our teachers union with that, but it has been brought up. I know in the time I've been here where we, um, we've brought that up with the union uh, regarding absenteeism and high absenteeism. Uh, you know, throughout the course of the year and at peak times, you know, holidays uh, and so forth. I mean, just, you know, and I, Podge Grove is no different than anybody else. Uh, you know, the experiences that I've had, you know, in the Springford School District or the Upper Perk Yeoman School District or the Phoenixville School District, um, you know, it's a common, it's a common theme that, t that you know, um, that happens. Uh, it wasn't, you know, you know, our fill rate, you know, sometimes, Joe, you know, we're, we're as high as 90 percent. We, we fill our subs, you know, we have a 10 percent. Uh, and then other days, you know, we're, we're at 70. We only have, we're, we're missing 30 uh, percent. We do, we do pay teachers to fill in, especially at the secondary level. Um, it's, it does put a strain on our elementary school teachers because they have to, uh, they divide up kids. You know, everybody gets three and it's third grade, everybody gets four and fourth. You know, it's just, it, it's definitely, um, you know, uh, a burden. Our building administrators, I think, do an excellent job of coming in. That's that's the first thing you talk about boots on the ground. First thing they have to do every single day is who's in and who's out, and how can we make the best learning environment that they possibly can for that day for that for that group of children. Um, so the uh, so it impacts it impacts the whole 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 culture of learning. So we're definitely aware of it. I mean, I've I've interviewed six people in the last the last two weeks for sub jobs. Uh, they come in, we get them on staff, and then we, we someone goes out for an extended period of time, and we, we put them in a long-term per diem sub, you know. So uh, I, I, think, I think that we're doing a good job. I don't, it's not a lack of effort. It's not a lack, lack of advertising um, f from, from our part. It's unfortunately, it's a numbers game, and uh, I, I'm going to obviously, uh, I hear that the, I will get that information out and update the board as well as the public on, on our saga uh, as well. And, um, you know, so, some districts too, you know, some things to look at, you know, in the future contractually, you know, you limit personal days. That's another, that's a, that's an, you can limit personal days. Some school districts even pay per diem rates for personal days. And guess what? Teachers don't use them because they want the money. So at the end of the you know, there's all sorts of different creative ways to do things to to generate you know to keep teachers in um, their classrooms at times, but um, it's you know when it's it's just varying factors with with uh, young families and you know uh, family sick leave and uh, you know it's we're, we're no different than anybody. I'm not telling you a story that you wouldn't hear from any other superintendent in southeastern PA or <laughs> state probably, uh, and I think we're we're more of a affluent. Uh, blessed area when it comes to teaching, you know, teachers and, and students coming in. You know, if we were out in Erie and other places, you know, I'm sure that they're struggling a lot, lot more than we are here, uh, because um, we have that opportunity to get uh, to have a lot of teaching universities and colleges. So, um, I'll, I'll get that information together. I think it's worth a share, obviously, to the board and to the community that we are are doing our, our part. And I think we just need to maybe just future, just continue to think about. Um, the uh, the impact and that of the budget and who 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 should we be looking at when we're talking about that those raises like should we look at at all versus one particular group? And I, I let me be clear I have no doubt uh, and believe and uh, support the administration that this district is doing um, its fair share and is doing you know its job as far as doing what they can to find subs absolutely there's a most definite shortage. Uh, but I'm looking outside the box for that, and I'm looking for some, I don't know what the term is, uh, fairness, equivalency, whatever. We pay a central office staff 500 a day that equals to 123000 and we pay uh, a sub $100 that equals 22000 a year. 
which is half the salary. I, it, there's a problem with that. And I am not against uh, what you brought up, looking at all areas, all the AIDS uh, subs and so forth. They should be looked at as well. The only thing I'd like to add, I think, to, to put it all in perspective, too, is, um, and, I, and, I, and I go back to history, uh, we use history to help us prepare, propel ourselves to the future and learn from that. Um, this, the last six months, we haven't done any, we, we've manned the ship, so to speak. Uh, I didn't, we didn't ask the board for any particular help to uh, add any, any, any burden to the budget, if you will. And, I, and, and during my tenure, you wouldn't get that because uh, with the experienced administrators and directors that we have here, um, and one of the things we're trying to set up here is next man up, if you will, next woman up, next person up. And that, and that is that, that we have our department set up that people understand the job. So if, if someone does leave because of a new position or someone gets sick or retires, then we have the ability to, to fill that gap in the in intermediate time without bringing that extra person on. So that is something definitely that I can say. I learned from that history uh, that, that was probably maybe not necessary, but it just happened. And uh, we've learned from that. And that's something that we'll, we'll at least during my tenure, we, we, that would not happen because we, Unless it would be a dire emergency, we, we would be able to function. And that's, that's sort of my ultimate goal of being able to have the next person up step in and do the job, you know, in the inter intern time. So thank you. And you proved it this uh, half year. Um, you know, you didn't, you're not just saying it. Because, so kudos. Um, we haven't been doing the $500 a day person since August, at least. I could just do say something really quick, just to piggyback off this whole, you know, substitute, you know, teacher shortage. Um, I'm wondering if there's some way within the district we could sort of start to promote teaching as a career. I know, I mean, having a child that that just graduated and is actually um, uh, now in school to be a uh, secondary teacher. Um, he was never talked to, to about that. Maybe teachers didn't see it in him. I, I don't know. I did from almost day one. Like that, that kid will be a fantastic teacher. Um, but yeah, I talked to him about it. I said, did any teachers ever approach you and just say, you know, maybe that's something you should think about? And he said, no. And I don't think it's something that it's promoted that much. That's just my feeling. It seems to me today that every child is supposed to become an engineer. And there's nothing wrong with that, <laughs> wrong with that unless th you stink at math <laughs> or chemistry or, <laughs> or you be an right, or you want to be a teacher. Um, and I know a lot of the focus right now in the whole country is, you know, engineering and, you know, do this and that, but not every child, not every person's cut out to be an engineer and uh, uh, I'm the perfect example of that. Um, but we all have our, have our strengths. And a, I fear that a lot of these kids aren't going into t teaching because number, I mean, there's so many reasons for it and we, we know a lot of them. But I think, you know, a lot of kids, they start out first, second, third grade, you know, I wanna be a teacher, I wanna be a teacher. Um, and then of course, you know, they decide on something else. Um, but I think maybe if we just sort of talked it up a little more, maybe some kids would go, oh yeah, hey, maybe that's not a bad idea. You know, maybe I will go into education. There's no, I mean, I'm not saying we have to start a program for it or anything like that, but I just, maybe just something to think about. Maybe we can sort of start a trend where we can, you know, push a few more kids into education, be it, you know, secondary, you know, whatever. I, I don't care. Four through eight, eight, you know, seven through 12, L ed, whatever. Okay, thank you everybody for the, uh, for the comments. Um, can we move forward at this point uh, to answers to previous questions? Okay. Uh, regarding uh, recording of uh, committee meetings, uh, I'm still in contact with Mr. Regensburg as far as how feasible would that, that would be. 
uh, for his his group. So I'm uh, still working with him. Uh, I plan to meet with him. Uh, we've we've done some email correspondence, but it's time that we we sort of sit down and hash out what exactly it needs to be done. So you'll be you'll be getting more information uh, from me on that. I think uh, on uh, on the policy of hazing. Um, Basically, I wanted to share, I'll paraphrase, paraphrase what I shared with the board. Uh, starting tomorrow, uh, 247 is a new policy, and uh, I will be going out to the, to the buildings to discuss this new policy with, with all staff members during faculty and staff meetings. Uh, and basically what we're asking everybody to do, we're handing out a hazing policy to everybody. They're going to be asked to sign that particular sheet. And the people who we don't get in contact with or miss that day, the building principals will make that contact, pass out the, the policy, and, um, and have them sign off. From that point, once we get around to everybody, the sign-in sheets come back to the DO, they get recorded, and then all new employees will be, that'll be on their to-do list when it comes to policy recognition when they become new employees of the district. So I, I think pretty much um, we have we've come full circle with that. And a lot of times what I, what I like to do, even with new policies, to go out and really alert the staff to the new policies uh, and what, if it affects them or if it doesn't affect them or how it affects the district or students. So um, that's, that's uh, you know, that'll take place uh, by the end of February. I'll have an opportunity to get around to all the staff members and have those sign-off sheets and we'll be moving forward with the new, new employees. Um, the uh, pre-first grade discussion, I know we, we sent out several pieces, Mr. Avoris sent out se several pieces of information to the board, and basically uh, what came back really after, after meeting with kindergarten and first grade teachers at this point, uh, you know, if the board would consider moving forward, you know, we really want to spend our time in the pre-K. I think that, that that's the area that we want to, if we're going to, if we're going to look at, um, you know, a pre the first grade uh, program, the pre first grade, it seemed like you know it it, um, it revolved around standards. What could be, and, and with the addition to full day kindergarten, and then the standards starting, you know, with the standards uh, that are needed in first grade, uh, we feel we have a pretty good grasp of that in those students. And really, the the change or the effect of change possibly um, would be to look at pre kindergarten programs. Uh, and how we could bolster that. So I know we, uh, Mr. Vore sent out information to you for diff the, about the process, the themes that he came up with, with his interviews. And uh, but the overall recommendation would be to stay the course. And if we want to do anything, would be to look at students before they get here and a little bit more soundly. So, and I think that takes me back to Mr. Alexander. Okay, thanks, Dr. Shirk. Um, so uh, a second check for public comment uh, based on any uh, non-agenda items that we discussed tonight. Do we have any requests for public comment at this point before we, uh, before we adjourn? Can I ask a question? Sure. What's the point of having the staff sign the hazing just, just so they, they acknowledge that they, that they read it and they're responsible for it. We, we just, it's a new policy. It's, um, it's, it's a PSBA, Governor Wolf recommendation. And, and one of the things, great, good question. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, hazing is just not about athletics and sports. Hazing could happen anywhere on our campuses. So that's really the why. And it could happen in the cafeteria with a, ca a custodial. Like, we just want to bring the attention and awareness uh, to everybody, not just a not just a limited a limited group. Okay, um, if that is it for public comment, then we will adjourn the meeting. Thank you.